that's I think that's where people get caught in not being honest because they want to avoid well, the argument. I also think that people are people are not being honest because they're shoplifting the pussy. Yo, what's up, Square Pimpergate? On this episode, we have my boy Mike Fanoy, a very funny dude. He's here. We discuss finding the best moments in a, in the bed in the bedroom situation, uh, not thinking about things negatively, organizing your life, and being uh, with a career-driven woman. All really good stuff. Mike's the really uh, an open book, so I, I really enjoyed this one. So. Yeah, man, it's a fun one. And if you love the show uh, and if you want more of the show, please join us over at patreon.com slash manschool202. That's where we do all the bonus content, including uh, listener mail, where we answer your questions. And this week, uh, we continue our conversation with comedian Mike Fanoia as we talk about some interesting topics, including focusing on the positives, uh, what makes a good relationship, and then uh, managing your life when you're and relationship when you have ADD and other uh, mental mental dif- uh, difficulties. I don't know if that's the proper terminology. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Whatever you want to call it. Whatever sickness, when you got that sickness in your brain, you got you're the all, poison. Well, you got you, you got a you got a mental illness like I do. Uh, but if you uh, if you need some help with your relationship and life advice, you could always uh, do a consultation. You can email me at uh, advicefromharry at gmail.com and I can set up a time and uh, give you the rates. And uh, if you want a consultation from Dante, Dante, how do they find you? DanteNero.com. Click on consult. You can hit me. Get it right on the, on my website. So, um, yo, let's get into it, bro. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, 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 what's up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. What's going on, baby? How are you doing, though? You know, I, 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 if I said I would, could be doing better, I'd be lying because I'm doing great. Yeah. God damn it! It is. I, I feel you. I feel you. I'm yeah. celebrating uh, the lovely Columbus Day. Where that's right, yeah, Columbus Day, that's the lovely, right. lovely punch of Indian in the face day. Uh, one of my favorite uh, holidays of all time. So, <laughs> and in uh, during in, Italian in, Rapist Day, I like it. I like it. Take somebody it land and then rape and pillage day. Yeah, what? yeah. You know, it's the day to barbecue. Uh, anyway, I'm ready to. I'm ready to rock and roll. This is gonna be a special show. I know I've said this 500 times before, but this time I mean it. The guy I'm about to bring on, good friend of mine, one of those guys that I get a warm, warm cockles, warm cockles in my heart whenever I see him. Really, really good guy. Dude, dude, funny, funny dude. Um, I like this dude a lot. Give it up for my boy, Mike Fenoya, y'all. What up, Mike? What's going What's on, up, brother? guys? How are you? It's good to see good you to both. See you. I wish we were in person. You're two guys I love to see. Yeah, oh, yeah, man. yeah. We always yeah. give a... Dante and I, we, do, uh, we got good hugs. Remember our, our, our a hug we came up with where we just put our yes, two bald heads touch, together and make a heel? We just bald heads now. Yeah. Yeah. That's got a special like hug. The, the oh, rings. Nice. That's like the rings. Yeah, yeah. And I will form a bucket of water. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, here? The Wonder Twins. I'm doing good, man. You know, uh, just, just, yeah, I'm doing good. You know, nothing special going on. Just hustling, and you're just life is all right. You know, I'm trying to be better with being in the moment and not getting into the negative. I have my days where I go back and forth a little bit, but when I look back, I'm like, life is pretty good. I can't complain. Everybody in the family's healthy. I got a great, great girl. I just got back from a road gig that turned out to be a nice gig, you know. Yeah. Oh, the road gig, it ended up being good. It ended up being all right. I don't know if it was worth it financially, but it was a fun time. It was a good time. I was it's dreading just, it. I'm not going to lie. You were really dread. You were like, you had made up your mind right away that it was going to be a shit gig, you know. Well, the yeah, you know what happens is sometimes you get these these gigs and the money's not great, right? The money's not great, and it's a little bit of a drive. It turned out to be nice in spite of the gig. The people were nice, but it just, again, logically, I can't do that again, right? Yeah. It turned out to be a nice trip, but financially, the amount of time I took, yeah, I could have spent it doing other stuff to better yeah. my career. If, if It's a long drive. It's about four and a half hours, five hours each way. That's a long drive or whatever. My, I took my girl. We had a nice weekend, and that was fun. The people were very nice. The locals were very nice. The people at the show turned out great. Those locals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it that's was all right. Thing, right. That's the part of this that's like, you know, part of living your dream is a nightmare. 
but also it's yeah. uh you know w- when you make those trips though harry if you didn't wouldn't you be kind of like i wish i made that trip you know what i mean you're always regretting it if you don't sometimes i feel i like the life experiences and it and it's uh it's a gamble and the gamble turned out good but there's been gam- there's been days where that gamble turned out pretty rough oh of course you know, you know what yeah. i mean you, you do the gig it's an awful i mean dante and i did one that was everything about it was nice except the gig itself you know the pay was good the room yeah. was good the the travel wasn't too bad and then the gig ended up being a fucking nightmare so sometimes you don't get all of it so i'll take the blessings where you can i guess or whatever you call it i'm not a religious guy but like you still do those mike you do those You'll still do those shit gigs too sometimes. <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, like like Harry said. I mean, sometimes it's. I mean, sometimes it doesn't matter where it is. It could be the greatest yeah. place, and it turns out being a a rough yeah. gig, or the drive is everything but the gig sucks. And then you get on stage, and you're yeah. like, "This is why I did this." You know, right, yeah, right, right, worth yeah. it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's funny. I think that like starting out, I would look at my calendar. Before the pandemic, and now I'm starting to more get back to that, where I'd look at the calendar and I would kind of like panic if it wasn't full. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it was just like, you don't see the days that are full. You The days that are not you are the ones that are empty. blinking yeah, yeah. at you, right? And it's that like, you know, yeah. you, it, Harry, like you said, it's kind of thinking about the good and not the bad, right? Like trying to be, be positive instead of going like, look at this, I got two out of four weeks booked or whatever it's right, like why don't yeah. i have those other two booked like what do i need to do to get work to do and i would do anything i could to fill those calendar spots and then i'd be on the road for five six hours whatever you know breaking yeah. in and all that and i'm like what the fuck like what did i do this for you know yeah so yeah. it's fear I, I th- it it's comes fear. To, yeah well it's those are the two places we operate from right love or fear yeah. and yeah. I, th- I think that yeah you're right it's fear but also it's like you know once you say no or once you give yourself permission to have a weekend off, you're like, oh, wow, I can do this. Like, I can actually yeah. value my time off instead, you know. But I'm sure going on the road with Dante, though, your guaranteed good music is being played. <laughs> and that's the most important when thing. When I'm on the road with Dante, it's fun. That part is fun. Uh, this particular gig, I was there were no comedians coming up with me. I was meeting them there. So that yeah. part of it isn't. Yeah. Isn't part. I mean, I went up with my girl, so that was good. We it's had cool, a good man. time. But it's it's interesting you talk about that, you know, because part of it is the adventure and the love, and then there's also a logical part. Like I'm glad I did the gig, but the logical part in me has to go. Yeah, I can't do that again. In the sense of the money was not good enough. Like I just I did okay with it. Like I I I made more than I spent, but it's sort of like with the amount I put my car through, or if something went wrong, it's a little dicey. You know, so that's the balance you got to do. Like, hey, that's the adventure of it. And that's why it's kind of a young man's game, because when you're 20s, you don't give a shit. Like, oh, let's just fucking do it. <laughs> like, yeah. let's just do something ridiculously irresponsible. And we we'll worry about the consequences later. But I'm glad that Doug, my gig was I because, you know, I had a shit gig, too. Oh, you were but telling my, me about this. What was that? What was that? So as a guy's a big fan of mine, right? Mm-hmm. He calls me up last minute. It's not, it wasn't, it was, it was local, right? But it was a private gig birthday party, right? And I'm like, he was like, yo, me and me and my me and my wife, we came to see you and we 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 got there late, so we didn't see all of your set. And so I really want to have you come to her birthday party and perform. So, you know, they don't know the elements of so I'm trying to tell, well, where are you having it at? Like, I'm, I was really trying not to do it, right? So it was like, well, you know, you know, it's going to be a So I know it's a birthday gig. What are we talking? Maybe 50, 20 minutes. Maybe I have to do, you know, if I'm if I'm if it's rough and then a half hour, maybe I got to make. But I know I can I can fucking get away with that but i just know it's a hate and i don't want to do a hard gig it's not a comedy club it's it's fighting with people for attention it's also if it doesn't go right and people start wait, talking let me let me explain okay. to you what it was. okay <laughs> because because we so met doing Santa, a shit gig Santa Caro- karaoke bar right oh oh boy oh boy so it's a private karaoke room so you walk in the first of all it's in uh in um uh, uh Bay Ridge, like Koreatown and Bay Ridge. So it's like 
it, it, it's weird how they are make you feel like you don't belong there, like in Koreatown. All of the doorways, I don't think any of the doorways were higher than five foot. They were not, they were, <laughs> it was like I was climbing in a tree house, right? So you literally, the hallways, everything was this like, like in B, B and John Malkovich, where it's yeah, on like yeah, the, yeah, it was so like first the seventh it was, and a that half was weird. So you got to stoop down to get in this, which is, then you get in the room and the room is like, so it looks like a mace video. It's just neon lights all over the room. They, they, they rented the private room. So there's no stage. I asked him if there was a stage. He said there's a platform. The platform was actually the DJ booth uh, with a a a, a maybe th- two by two by two square with a speaker hanging above it, right? And then there's speakers all over the laying on the floor. You can like sit on the speakers. Um, they're all there. Everybody's dressed a whole like a whole. Uh, a black family, their friends, it's, you know, a couple of some cuties, whatever. But it was like not. So he was like, yo, here's the mic. Like he just gave me. I go, no, no, no. You got to you got to tell them. Do they know that there's a comedy show? Um, I mean, we, we kind of we wanted it to be a surprise. Uh, no, no, no it, absolutely not. We don't need a, a, a surprise comedy show. You got. I need you to get on the mic. I need you to tell them the, See, that the this. thing that people think is going to happen is that it's going to be like, oh, oh. Shit. first of all, even though you have notoriety, you're not a like well-known celebrity like where they're going to stop and, and go. They love me. The, the couple the two, loves the me. couple lo- loves you, but that doesn't guarantee the that rest the other of them have know. no idea who the fuck right. I am. So and you're just the big, big guy hand. coming in the room grabbing a microphone. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. So it has all the subtlety of an airline hostage situation. Plus, like, it was kind of like it was like mm, kind of mace. Like they were popping bottles. Like they had you know where they had bottles with the juice and bottle service with ice. Everybody sitting on couches, just set up. Um, there's no stage, there's no stool, there's no, the microphone has reverb on it. Like I'm shooting a video. I thought I was like to sound like I had audio tunes on it, you know, so you make you're doing dub reggae into it. (laughs) Like just you do one time, one time in your mind, 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 mind. (laughs) So I go and I, I like the guy goes, I go, you have to let them know that there's a comedy show. You have to explain to them this is what it is. So they're like, you know, the, it, I get there at one because I was doing gigs in the city, and uh, it like I was like I was trying to not do it right. So the guy asked me, it's twenty minutes. So I go, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't do that for less than two G's, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> You're trying to price yourself out of it. I'm trying, trying to, to price it. myself out. And you know what, Harry? I've learned today. I'm worth two G's. He oh, didn't wow. Even, couldn't even, he you didn't, couldn't price yourself out? He didn't yes. fucking blink. Nice. Two G's. He didn't. For, yeah, that's what you charge. That's what you charge. Like, motherfucker, right? So now how do I how do I not do a gig but two stacks for 20 minutes? For 20 minutes, yeah. I'm, it's not what, is, what, is, what is that? $100 a minute, right? <laughs> And you get a good story out of it too. Jeez. And uh, he you goes, uh, yes yeah. So he, he gives me the mic. I go, no, no. You have to introduce me. You have to say happy birthday, and this is special. Say something. I tell. I walk him through it. He gives me the mic. I sit on a speaker where I, I look like I'm sitting on a kitchen chair, right? In and, and they're just, what the fuck is this? So I, I, and I just, I shitted on his shitty intro. I shitted on the room. I, I, <laughs> and then you're like $300. Yeah. $400. I was, $500. <laughs> and I always said this, like I always tell Harry, I just, I always look, if I have to, I'm at a place 22 years in, I'm not going to do, if I got to do something I don't like, when I leave, I want to be able to just go. Uh, all right, uh, you know, shit gig, but see you later. Two G's. Yeah, right. Yeah. At first, I was going for seven fifty, and I was like, 
he might have that paper. You know what I mean? Yeah, he yeah, might yeah, have yeah. that. I was like, he was like, he I was come like, up with that. Like, Him and his friends could split it. You go, that's 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 not enough. You need. Like, to- he could he could get up seven fifty. I was like two G's. I just knew he was gonna. Then he didn't call me. He didn't call me all week. He calls me the day of afternoon. Yo, I want to send you the address. Yo, can I venue mow you the money? Right. Motherfucker, this motherfucker. <laughs> they really like me. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny too when you do uh when someone hires you to do like a pri- non comedy club gig, yeah. right? And it's like you want to kind of just be like, listen, take my advice. Like I've I do this, yeah. so please trust me. This doesn't have to be a four hour show. No. This doesn't have to be like I was happy to hear that you only had to do twenty minutes because most of the time they're like you know, like, can you bring a couple guys? Each of you do an hour, and, and it's yeah. like, no, nobody wants to listen to. <laughs> nobody it. wants that. Everybody, like, we should all do twenty at the most. We'll do, you know, like I think <sighs> comedy shows are too long to start with. You yeah, know yeah, I mean? yeah. And then they want you to do like, you know, they either put you in between a raffle or after music or what. This before, was whatever. literally karaoke. Ugh. So I, I kind of look like a dude who was doing karaoke, but I wasn't doing music. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just tell jokes. <laughs> Did the mic still have that reverb on it? It the, had the, the whole re- time. You couldn't, oh, could God. not. I asked the DJ who wasn't the DJ was a guy with a laptop. He was like, "Yo, can we take the reverb?" He goes, "Nah, yo, we can't do all that." I was all like, that. Oh, "All that, all that, right. right. do all it's, that." It, it, it is incredible if you like just sit back and like think about like if someone told you about their worst day, but yeah. it's like a cubicle job, right? Like, <laughs> right, right, I've, right, I've, right. Driv- I've driven to Vermont and done shows where there was no sound system because, like, the guy yeah. who was bringing it, it broke down. But I'm yeah, here yeah. now, and I got to yeah, do yeah, the yeah. show. And, like, yeah, we're yeah. using breadsticks as mics just to hold something. Right, 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 you know right, I mean? right. It's like, do you ever do that? Like, you know, yeah, yeah your Keurig broke in the office. Like, you know, it's it, some of the hotels we have to stay in. Some of the- I did a Mexican restaurant. Um, they jacked them. Uh, they jacked a mic into the jukebox, and I stood on. I stood on a chair oh, in God. a in a in a stair alcove, which is <laughs> which is because uh, there was one one time uh, man when we was hanging. I was years ago. I was hanging out with with uh, Patrice and all them at the cellar, and Billy Burr comes in. He talks about this. Comes in. He talks about a gig he does. For Yankee tickets, he and they asked him to do comedy on a on the bus, the, the oh. bus to the Yankee, and we trashed Billy for <laughs> forty five minutes. Like where where you where was the green one? The stairwell? How did you know? How did they know they light lit you? What they do? Ring the bell on the like? We just <laughs> oh we trashed. But it's you, hard you know to what say I mean? no sometimes, yeah. Didn't I hear something but, that they were doing? They wanted to bring comedy onto airplanes for a while before oh, the Jesus pandemic. Uh, I remember that. Yeah. I forget what airline it was, but I thought they wanted to bring on. Yeah, I didn't know that. I have seen. I heard some funny, uh, you know, some funny stewardesses though to have a good, nice <laughs> little spiel. Where you're like, <laughs> it was kind of cool. But I, my 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 um my philosophy. How you'd say this? My philosophy is, if it's a shit gig. I'm going to try and price you out. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. the that's the that's maturity though. That's growing yeah. up. Cuz before you go and early on and you go like I can't say no to anything. When you're yeah. first starting out, you go like I yeah. can't say no to anything. But then you go like, yeah, you know, that's if you if they'll meet match this insane number I'm going to throw at them. Right. Then sure. I I'll absolutely could, I I was mad at myself cuz I absolutely could have got three grand. I could have did but three now grand. You're, now you're being like greedy on yourself because it worked out. Well, your plan worked out, and then you're like, it's did not it, enough. It did, did it really? You made two grand <laughs> for 20 minutes of yeah, work. You, you, you didn't have to drive 10 hours to go to Altoona, Pennsylvania. No, I, was, I, I literally left Stand Up New York and drove and came across the bridge and went to Bay Ridge. Yeah, you live in Brooklyn. It was I mean, like 130, <laughs> like 130. To, as soon as I finished, everybody left. Yeah, I did. Jay was just waiting for me to come on. <laughs> Harry, he's going. Wait, wait, we got a surprise coming. So you got to love when you're the surprise. You know, it's funny too. Is I remember doing early on. I did a gig, private gig, and the minute I got there, they go, uh, "This is a clean gig. You can't. You got to be completely <gasps> clean." And I'm like, "Oh, you tell me this now." 
And that had happened years before, and I flipped out. And I'm like, <laughs> you can't throw this on me now, and blah, 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 you know? And I'm like pissed off screaming at the guy, and then I go on and try to be funny, and I'm already mad, and it went horrible. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, but this time I'm like, all right, kind of expected this to happen. So I just popped the bubble right away. And I was like, so there's a priest in the room I heard. Right. And they were yeah. like, yeah. And I'm like, father, I was just told this is supposed to be a clean show and it's not going to be. So when I say earmuffs, that's when you cover your ears and I'm going to say <laughs> something you probably don't want to hear, you know? And then I afterwards kind of told the guy, like, listen, you got to let people know ahead of time because it's not fair to the comics, you know, like yeah. it, 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 know even if it's booking. something that, you know, like you got to just let them know. And then the priest, you know, I mean, he, he, he was likes, cool as shit, man. Like, it made it great. He likes fucking kids, but hey, he doesn't want to, yeah. he doesn't like dirty jokes. Come on now. I mean, yeah. let's, let's not be, well, let's not be the, you know, the, the thing is I'm trying to be more positive and I think the big message with all this is not just talking about comedy, but trying to not be negative with everything you do and try to find the positivity uh for me though it, it it came apart because what what it was presented that as kind of changed as it went along so it changed yeah. the fire i was supposed to go up there with two other people and then it kind of yeah. changed where they were going up there by themselves so that automatically cuts the money that you're spending because right, y'all were gonna ride gas. together and yeah shake, that yeah. type of thing and did then you also go there and back one night or did you stay down no no we got a hotel we stayed there one night it was, it was nice yeah we stayed there that part was fine but then also I'm like, Jesus, I'm in a town by myself. I don't know what the fuck. Because they're going to leave. They had to leave, the other two comics. Like, okay, so then I'm there by myself. Like, And nobody understood that, and you guys will understand that. Like, I don't know what's going to go down here. At least I have those other two. I don't know. Maybe they'll fight. I don't know. But yeah. like, we, I just saw this video. This no, nah, I know who you were doing the gig with. They wouldn't go to fight. <laughs> they wouldn't have. But I don't know. At least there'd be a body to get in the way to yeah. take to take one or two so I can at least get have some time to set up to take out whoever I got it. I don't know. It's a strange thing that you got to think that way, but I just saw a video today. I don't know if you saw this Dante or, or Mike that, that, uh, this woman had a beer can thrown at her. Yeah. I saw, that. I saw that. Yeah. And yeah. that's what it's like. She now, was at, right? um, uncle Vinny's uncle. You've been there. Yeah. You've been yeah. to uncle Vinny's. She was at uncle Vinny's. This lady asked, she asked, well, uh, did you vote for Trump? And she goes vote for Biden. The difference, uh, and no, you voted for Biden. And she goes, yes. Yeah, so what? You can vote for every. And then she throws a beer can at, yeah. at this chick. She picks up the beer can and chugs it. Like yeah. just, yeah. yeah which, uh, you know, deep down, she was if, if fearful of her life. <laughs> when she it's terrible did. that she's got a, I mean, she handled it. I mean, thank God she's all right. Good thing that thing didn't hit her in the head, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But that's yeah, what you got to, that's stuff. one of the things where like, I can't believe now I got to drive down and the, you know, you find out little by little. Oh, so you guys are fucking taking off when you're done. Yeah. So if you shit the bed and it turned out that wasn't the case, but I'm, yeah. and I don't know if I'm being pessimistic, worst case scenario, but I got to worry about all that shit. Where, There's a I'm thing there, called yeah. uh, automatic negative thinking syndrome yeah. ants. And it's like the minute that you hear a situation, your brain goes, Harry don't case. have an ants. Yeah. He has roaches. <laughs> I don't know what that stands for. But it's just bigger, <laughs> bigger ones. Water bugs. Harry. Yeah. <laughs> it's ants carrying uh, cockroaches. Yeah. Which I'm trying yeah to they had, a, they, they sure, had yeah. a hotel across the street. Man, I should have asked for a room. I was like, I need a room. I'm next time I'm going three grand uh, from now. <laughs> I'm going three grand and I need a room across the street. Yeah, but you live in Brooklyn. No, I need a room. No, to spend was, all yeah. night so I could drive back in the morning. Fuck that. You got to get ready, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah, Harry, whatever. that was a hard part. Going on the road alone is tough. I yeah, mean, yeah. even not yeah. for the whole worrying about getting a beer can thrown at you, just the time spent alone. Like, you know, like we've thought about that, talked about that a bunch. Like you go yeah, like, yeah. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday sometimes or whatever. And it's oh, like, sure, yeah. that you know, there's some gigs where, you know, even if it's a showcase, like you go to a casino or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah, you're in the hotel for 22 hours, <laughs> yeah, doing yeah. nothing, and then and then you know four or five hours till showtime, you start to get that like the ticking clock, like oh, yeah, yeah. shit, like do I shower? Let me now? get a shower. Do I let do me I, shave? I got to shave I my head. Do I like this know. shirt? Do I not? Do I what? Yeah, you know? Yeah. And then you're just like pacing like a caged animal. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you go do the show, and before you know it, it's over, and yeah, then you're yeah. either back in your room. Or well, you're that. hanging out with some people that you would never hang out with yeah. ever. <laughs> yeah, and it's pent up energy that you're just kind of like, what do I do with this now? You know, and that's hard. That's tough. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, so I, I go found that the money, the money people. helps all of that. An absorbent amount of money yeah, always it does makes make that people. easier. Yeah, the, an yeah, absorbent yeah, just, amount of money. 
Because those I was like, when I went there, I was pay. driving there and like knew it was gonna be a shit gig, and I was like, yeah, but you know, eh. look what I, I mean. Look, I'm walking out of here with tw- with with tw- two two stacks real quick. Did they enjoy it? The show? Did they? They did actually it? did. Some of them did. Some of them were just like stone facing. There was this really fucking smoking hot girl there. And I was doing my joke about therapy and she was like, yeah, because sometimes you go to therapy and you got to, you know, you got to you got to really open yourself up there. And I was like, you realize that we are in a karaoke spot and yeah. this is just a setup for a joke. Right. You realize that. Right. So then she got really mad at me. Right. <laughs> she, I mean, she was some smoking hat and dumb as a rock. Right. So, so she was like, she was like, well, go ahead, continue then. And I was like, uh, I was like, look, I'm oh, sorry. I, I don't want to be in this fucking, I don't want to do this shit gig. I go, this guy Lyndon hired me because his girlfriend, like, and, and I don't even want to be here. So, like, let's just get, let me do the rest of these four minutes and we get the fuck out of here. But it is what it is. You still with your lady, Mike? Yeah, man. Absolutely. And- ten, 10 years married now. I think what's interesting about Mike is Mike, do you still go up there or do you stay in the city now? Uh back and forth. Yeah, where back do you stay forth. now? Yeah. Well, I'm uh hold on one second. Where because Mike is uh he had a distance thing, right? Yeah, well yeah. I'm in I'm in like right outside New York and I drive back in and out to do shows. So okay. I'm with her all the time. We we live together. Oh. Once the pandemic hit, I got rid of my okay. place in Queens. Right. And I just commute in and out. So it's not bad, though. I actually. Oh, I thought because like I know you had a place. in Yeah, I know you had a place in the well, city. The and minute then the would... pandemic hit, it was like, yeah, I don't think we've. Yeah. I mean, like, so the second it hit, it was like, I, do you remember? It was like they may block state borders. You may not yeah, be yeah, able yeah. to get out of state or in state, whatever. Yeah, so yeah, I remember yeah. I did a spot I, and I ran to my apartment and I grabbed as much shit as I could <laughs> in a couple bags and I got you know, headed out and stayed with her and then got rid of the place in Queens because it was just like, what the fuck? Why do I need two places? There's no yeah. need to go down there. And yeah. it's not, you know, I'm not far. So I just cruise in and out and uh, I like it. It gives me time to kind of decompress. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's, and, and, and also, I mean, any drive I make would be the distance on a train that's going to break or yeah. fucking get stuck under the river. Yeah, that's yeah, where yeah. my panic sets in, Harry. When right. you're on the train and it gets stuck in the river, and you're oh, like, oh you, boy, you when it stalls I've had or there's a delay, going yeah. from Queens to you know oh, really? Upper East, and the train stops, yeah, uh, you know, and then it's like stuck underwater. And I it, oh, is that like, is that like really a concern for you that it's stuck underwater, not just that it's stuck and you're going to be late, but it's that you're stuck underwater. Underwater, yeah. I don't like tunnels. I don't. Li- <laughs> I like bridges. I don't like tunnels. But I'm like, all right. So if I have to kill, you just like look around and it's like, if this train, if if this is it, do you ever do that? Like you're on a train car and you're like, if this was humanity and it was up to me to, you know. <laughs> Kill someone who am I gonna eat? Or who am I gonna eat or, first? Yeah, who am I gonna eat? Who am I gonna throw through the window? Not on a train car, um, <laughs> like because the underwater and, and, and thing. The train would be, ride? A half hour, maybe yeah. ten minutes. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. If it goes express, if it goes express, <laughs> if the express Mike goes is, local, Mike is like, all right, who do I gotta take I'll be out? Okay, I'll be. We all are right. rerouting. And Mike is sharpening his blade. <laughs> I'm, eating I'm looking for that dude. <laughs> that's it. I'm looking for pencils to sharpen. But uh, yeah, we um, we're good. We're uh, it was it was fun to to do uh, you know, not fun to do the pandemic together, but it was definitely better than uh, not doing it. Doing it know? alone. Yeah, yeah. She was working, you know, hard. Was she nurse? She, she was in the, yeah, yeah. In the full, you know, through the entire thing. I mean, it was kind of a crazy experience to see it through her perspective. Right, and then you know you got like other people get COVID and they're like, yeah, it was a cold. It's not that big a deal. Right, right. And then other people are like, it's not real, and it's like, no, it's fucking real. But it's like, yeah, yeah. Everybody's per- perception is reality. So seeing it, right, right, her, right, right. And I'm just home, like panicking, like what the fuck do I do? You know what I mean? Right. I want to help her as best I can, but literally hands are tied. So how much hard. of the the success of the relationship do you think was the distance? Or do you genuinely realize that you really like each other and like each other's company? Well, that we realize. like, so after I went back, I think that both played a very important part at the times at which 
they were happening. Okay. Do you understand what I mean? So like, yeah, yeah. I think that the distance thing, realizing we can make it through that was, you know, I mean, we both were, we don't have kids. We don't want kids. We're both career right. driven. We both kind of just, you know, mm-hmm. old enough that we were like, you do your thing, I'll do mine and right. enjoy our time together. But then getting back together and hanging out a ton, we kind of like started dating again. And it was like, wow, we actually really dig each other. Like we right, like right. hanging and like, you know, spending time and, you know, and seeing what she went through and, you know, all that, you know, getting the, I mean, dude, these, the shifts that she had to fucking work and yeah, yeah. just getting, yeah. you know, but yeah, it was, it was, that part was great for then, you know what I mean? And now, so it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's interesting. She's cool. I, I, I'm, I'm very, uh, glad that things worked out the way that they did. And, uh, it's, you know, this, this gig, you got to kind of go all in, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's actually kind of funny. I remember a long, long time ago, and I don't remember what comic it was somewhere on the road. And I was telling him that I was engaged and he was like, why are you going to drag somebody else into this shit existence? (laughs) Right. You know? And I was like, you know, of course, headstrong and like, what are you talking about? It's going to be fine. And he's like, everybody fucking you know families get destroyed blah yeah. blah blah this and that do do it do her a favor and let her go now and i'm like all right brother well good chatting with you, you know, <laughs> Jesus, that's very what am I supposed to, you know what i mean like, yeah what are you weird supposed that, to say to that well i i'm I glad you had this you're not gonna go hey I, I spoke to this this degenerate on the road and he <laughs> said we probably shouldn't get married so I spoke to a guy sleeping in his car tonight and he told me to tell you yeah you should probably it's not gonna me. work it's yeah. really not gonna work. Yeah, but no, it's, it's crazy. It's, yeah, she's she's great. She's uh she's cool. Yeah, I I think also it's um the fact that she like loves what she does, and I know you you were telling me that, but how she loves which and she's career driven. This is what she wants to do, and the fact that you you know I I Harry and I talk about this all the time. There's so many comics that are miserable, you know, because um they don't they they act like comedy is a side bitch. It's like, it's like comedy is a side chick and it's really not. It has to be, it, you, it has to be your, your wife. Like comedy is your wife and your wife is the side chick um, because it's, this is how you earn money. You know, this yeah. is how you provide. This is, and so if some, and I, I know that's really difficult. And I also, it's also very difficult for somebody to have that kind of, um, for you to have that kind of passion about something when somebody doesn't have that kind of passion or when you are you and your relationship is their passion instead of their own life and their own existence, you know? So it's just, it just interesting. I don't think it would have worked out if it was just some person. Like, I I think that that's, it's important that it's her and it's important that it's me. You know what I mean? Like that part, I don't, I don't think that, I could totally see how things don't work out. And, yeah. you know, I mean, and I'm my own, like, you know, talk, talking about like what Harry was saying, like trying to focus more on the positive, you know, <laughs> I mean, like there's, there's, you know, it's so easy to be miserable. Yeah. Even yeah, when things are great, even when that calendar's packed. Yeah. It's yeah. Because so then you, easy to Then find you get upset shit. that you don't have the time. You're like, I'm constantly moving around. You can find a way to be negative. Like I'm sick of travel and I'm sick of being on the planes. And then, you know. You well, go back and forth on all of those things. Yeah, and even start, you know, and even like, you know, now I feel like I have a little bit of a different perspective on it after the pandemic because I'm just happy to be doing anything. Yeah. I was having a fucking hard time, man. It was like just having like your your wheels stuck in the mud for yeah. two years, you know? So now I have a different perspective. I'm just happy to be doing it. But Can I ask you something, Mike? Uh, she's a nurse, right? You're saying, mm-hmm. uh, and so that's a hectic schedule. As a comedian, you have a crazy schedule. How do you balance that out? Between the two, because I know that can be difficult just when somebody has a nine to five and you're a comic and you're a comedian. I think just like taking each week as a new week, like as nothing's going to be, it's not, you know, the whole idea of forever is such a weird thing because it's the only constant is change, right? So I think if we realize that like every week's going to be different, then there's no pressure on like having... Well, if last week it was like this, and you had spots on Monday. Why are you doing on Tuesday? Or how come you're working a late right. shift at the hospital? No, it's just you do it. You, you do. I do it. I do. We know. 
by now that our schedules are fucked. So what we try to do is each week or each, you know, however, whatever segment of time, month, whatever, we just make sure that we're carving out a little bit of time for us. You know what I mean? If it's not putting in for a day or two for spots or making Mm. sure that I keep a certain night free or same with her. And it's just a matter of kind of like, it, I think saying I don't know is like the most important thing. So it's like yeah. just, I, you know, I'm going to try to find as much work. And then there's times where she'll throw something that's like, you know, hey, I really want to do this, this and that. And I'm like, yeah, I gotta, I'm got, i going to have to work. Like, and that's just mm. my first thing. So it's right, right. It's just a matter of kind of taking each. Uh, it's also know. that her not taking it personal because what you're she's doing way is way tougher than me, man. So yeah. it's like, yeah, I mean, yeah, not taking it personal is 100 percent true. And I think it's explaining and seeing that it's like you know i'm doing this for money for work for more opportunity for stuff like that it's not to go hang out till three in the morning and get wasted and you know all that shit you know what i mean like it's yeah it's the passion and it's what you know what I, i'd be miserable if i wasn't doing it so, yeah yeah you know but uh and and part of the camaraderie and the hanging out is part of it too though i mean you know that sure. yeah and I, I think the other thing, the other difficult thing is that a lot of times um, some women have a problem with you having fun, you enjoying your life, because it's almost like it's an offense to them because you're enjoying your life and maybe they're not. Or how dare you have fun without me? You know, sure, it, that, sure. that could be. A, I mean, so it's got to be a. I, one of the things that I realize more than anything is. You know, and and people say this all the time, but they talk about the honesty of it, right? Um, the honesty of it and the acceptance of of what that outcome is. Um, I, I think there are things that uh, people. Um, I think there are things that people uh, assume is part of a relationship that other people don't assume that it's part of a relationship. And then because you're going into these assumptions, you, you, you go, Hey, this is this, uh, I, I need to say this. And so one of the things that I've been advocating and I've been talking about, um, on the show a lot is that the, the or everything needs to be verbalized. It there needs to be, you can't make an assumption that somebody gets that somebody gets what you're talking about. So like, for instance, one of the things, um, is you know like you get married and you you know guys will always assume that they're always good there's going to be sex right and there are so many sexless marriages because it gets to the point where a woman will look i want to be i want you i want to be married i want you to be monogamous and then i don't want to fuck you Or I don't want to fuck you if I don't want to fuck or or when I feel like it or because because there's so much distance, because we 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 don't we don't do these other things. I don't feel like fucking you. And so I I, you know, one of the things that I tell guys they're engaged and you're married, you need to say, look, I it needs to be said. You would think it doesn't need to be said, but it needs to be said. Understand this. If I get married to you that I'm expecting to get fucked for the rest of my life. That that we are going to and and you would think, oh, that's just the assumption. And then so many guys that I counsel over and over again who are in situations where they don't they're in, they be, end up in these sexless marriages and the prerequisite to be like, look, understand this. I love you and I want this with you. But if I'm not getting fucked, I'm uh, uh, the response is either we're going to break up or I'm going to go get fucked. But I'm not going to argue with you and fight. This is, you know, and it goes back to something I've said a long time ago, which is know your non-negotiables and then never negotiate them. But you got to be honest about what your negotiable, your non-negotiables are. And if sex is, you know, guys automatically think, oh, sex is just the prerequisite. But women don't think that. A lot of times women are like, you know, you you find this um, so often. I was... um, watching this uh this woman who uh, some woman who was doing she was like you know she was hanging out with a girlfriend and she says oh the lights on go around the corner let's 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 go get some ice cream because she's if i go in if i go in now he's gonna want to fuck and then she's like well why don't you want to fuck your husband i just don't want but you know i realize that being a 
you, you, there, there are things that come, there are things that I think that men understand about marriage, which is providing and keeping you safe and all those things. Those are things that we, we already know that that's what the expectation is because it's, it's really not different for anybody. If you're a, a guy who's a loser, who's not providing and keeping a woman safe, we know that you can, you know, we all know that you can get left, that she will leave if you're not doing well, I, I don't think it's but I think women don't always because men don't always speak up about what what is them. And I think the intensity of that well, this is this is what is OK with me. This is how much sex I expect to get in this marriage. And I think you have to open your mouth and say that, um, because if it doesn't come to that, doesn't get to that. Now you're in this marriage and you're resenting somebody because, you know, we a lot of times we as men, we our intimacy and our emotions is through that physicality. We express it through our physicality. And I, I think it's important to say that, you know? Mm. Yeah. The honesty part, it, it's you, the expectations are important to maintain whatever those expectations are. I know in past relationships, I've, I've had situations where I know I've, I've been having a, arguments with, you know, consistent arguments and I, and I go, well, this is no good. We can't do this. Well, what do you mean? I mean, we can't go a couple of days without arguing, you know, it's like, does that mean it's over? And like, no, doesn't mean it's over. But just so you know that this is not acceptable for me. I don't want it to continue like this. I want to work on it. I want to fix it. But I don't want to do a, a relationship where we have where we're fighting every five to seven days or once a week. That's not fighting once a week to me is not good. And I don't know. Maybe it's not a viable. It's not for no, me. It's not. No. Also, when it comes down to like when you're just arguing about the argument, yeah, right? and yeah. then it's like we're like two levels deep of dumb shit. Like now we don't even remember what like we were how, talking what, about, what the you... initial thing was about, and then that that part's when it's like, all right, this is just not, you know, this just isn't right. And yeah, I mean, I think that, yeah, I mean, honesty, it, it, especially, why wouldn't you be honest about all things if you're going to be, you know, diving into spending forever with someone you know what i mean yeah, whatever like, that is yeah. whatever that is you know what i mean i kind of feel like we should have to renew marriage like like driver's license like iphone uh, updates like three like yeah. every three years you gotta renew the you iphone gotta... terms i think that i think that it's kind of uh that's an interesting concept dante because i, I wonder about like you know like we said the only thing that's constant is change right so in the beginning mm -hmm. Maybe you go, all right, I want to get married because personally or whoever, you know, like someone says, right. I want to get married because of A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. And then you get married and you're married five to seven years or whatever. Maybe that A, B, and C changes. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And it's like, maybe now I want to travel a ton. Well, you want to stay home. Or mm -hmm. maybe I want to do this. And maybe you want to do, you know, it, it's, it's interesting how like you can go from being like dating to being friends you could go right. back to being friends but you can never right. go from being married from friends to back to dating back to dating or, yeah. you know what i mean like it's kind of interesting but yeah, yeah i think that I, the the whole the whole thing of like uh, we never had a can like a boredom mm -hmm. we've never had kind of like just this sort of you know yeah the old how long you been doing comedy how long you been doing comedy though 12 13 13 so you were like two, three years in when you met her. About a year. Like, we dated for yeah. a bit and then, you uh -huh. know, um, but I kind of was right away like, I'm doing this and, you mm -hmm. know, like I definitely was, I think I'm my own worst enemy though because I got in my own head where it's like, okay. I don't want to, um, like that guy kind of like similar to what that dude on the road was saying mm -hmm. where it's like, you know, you got to sort of be untethered when you're doing this to yeah. start with because you have to treat it like you know you got to attack you, it you got to well there's no it's availability no, in the beginning it's not like a you get a degree here's the syllabus you do this this this, 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 this. You, right there's no roadmap so you're constantly navigating your career on any level at any given time always and forever you know so yeah. it's a it's a living breathing thing that you're trying to wrangle, you know. The, the other thing, when you talk about why why wouldn't you want to be honest, the, I think for some guys, for a lot of guys, it's the problem is when you're honest. If that answer isn't appreciated or it, it doesn't vibe with what that other person wants, then it becomes sort of this argument and this fight, and guys don't want to deal with that. 
But you have to deal with that. You can't put it off, unfortunately. Unfortunately, you got to go through those things to solve those issues. Or if they can't be solved, you reach the conclusion that they can't be solved, then you have to move on. But you have to have those arguments. And it's hard for, for that's, I think that's where people get caught in not being honest because they want to avoid well, the argument. I also think that people are, people are not being honest because they're shoplifting the pussy. You know, they're, 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 they're in a spot that they don't have, they don't have the personality capital to purchase this person that they're with and they're in over their head or at least they believe they're in over their head. And so they feel like they need to misrepresent who they are so that, so that the person doesn't ever see who they really are because they feel like if the person knows who I really am, then they're going to leave. And so we, 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 we misrepresent who we are because we, we're, we're in a situation where we honestly think that emotionally, if not emotionally, just, you know, value wise, we're in over our head. So I've seen this so many times where a guy will be with this super hot girl. And because she, she perceives, he perceives that her hotness is more important than his existence he's he's lying and and conniving and it's it's yeah, it's an interesting also thing where like I'll get I'll get calls with guys I met this girl and I um you know I really like her and I hit her up but she didn't hit me back like what do I do and I and I'm like you I mean you you have to give me a scenario like I can give you I can send plays into the into the game but we got to be playing the game if she, if she's forfeited and never showed up at the field, yeah. uh, the, you can't make people do what they don't want to do. Right. So what right. what you're what you're asking me to do is to strategize, find a way to say the right thing to get her on the field. And the bottom line is the fact that she's she's not really in it in the first place means that she's not interested. And you got to be honest with yourself about that. And yeah. and that doesn't that doesn't diminish your value. I know that's easier said than done. People go, well, she doesn't like me, so it doesn't diminish my value. Um, but it it, it 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 doesn't. She maybe she just wants something different. It's it's every situation is so uh, you know so unique and so different, and the and and it, it'll start one way and become something totally different a couple years down the road i guess i don't know it's 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 fucked up but yeah <laughs> I, I couldn't imagine i couldn't imagine like uh not just being uh with this thing with like with you know com I mean, comedy is a thing where you kind of got to just be like listen it's gonna i'm gonna you miss do it because you cannot you do it because you cannot yeah. yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna miss you know a birthday here and there i'm gonna miss you know but what's a calendar, right? Like, can't we go to dinner the day after or the day before, you know? And, yeah. and I, and I, you know, maybe it's, you know, going back to what we were talking about a little while ago, like her being extremely busy and extremely dedicated to her craft and getting better and better at it. You know, yeah. it's like, we both kind of have that, uh, that drive. So, um, yeah, yeah I'm, but I'm it's tough. It's tough. Lucky. You, you're lucky in that sense for sure, because she has her own thing. Yeah. that she can focus on but the it's un, it's almost unfair though that in order to get that understanding that your partner has to have that you know you're lucky but not everyone has that you um, know? and I, I think that's a great thing but I, I I think it's also not just that but let's um Mike you want to plug your your podcast and your stuff real quick we're gonna do something on the patreon behind the scenes if you if you can anything you got coming up that you want to plug real quick oh uh, yeah you can check out my podcast is called comes a time uh it's on every we drop new episodes on friday um you could hear it anywhere. what kind of podcast is it uh it's a uh i i co-host it with um otiel burbridge he's the bass player from uh the allman brothers and dead and nice. company we talk about i mean everything how did we get here and where do we go from here is kind of like the theme and it's uh mm -hmm. music comedy uh mental health psychedelics you name yeah. it and it's a lot of fun and uh oh. Yeah, and um, MikeFanoia.com for my dates. I'm going to be doing New Year's Eve at Mohegan Sun uh, Comics. Dope. Dope. And uh, yeah, just I'll be updating new dates on there. So thank you. Appreciate it. Dope, 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 dope. Um, Harry, talk to me. 
Hey, uh, you can find all my stuff at Harry Turjanian. Uh, also, I'm doing consultations, so if you need any uh, relationship or life advice, you could reach me via email, uh, advice from Harry at gmail.com. Uh, everything, Google me, bitch. You know what it is. Um, also, one on one consultations, DanteNimber.com. Click on consult. Uh, don't forget to follow the Patreon. Uh, y'all supporting us helps us keep doing this. It's the on- only way that we keep doing it is by that. So we appreciate that. Uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. Yo, I love y'all. Check us out on the Patreon side. I'll holla at you later.